Greetings Matanistas. I've only just got back from London and Bristol after our sweaty 1-0 win away at Crystal Palace. Tonight we welcome RB Leipzig in the Champions League and we're going to have to do a bit better today I think in terms of our finishing. So let's hope everything's hunky-dory and City progress through to the next round so join me for today's Champions League match day vlog. I'm actually bringing you the vlog today from Salford, somewhere I don't go very often. It's also a bit red. But behind me, when I introduced the video, I was standing in front of a house that was painted by the great L.S. Lowry. I think the plaque said the painting was called County Court Salford. But anyway, he's one of my heroes. He holds the record for refusing honours the most time from the Queen or the King. And he was also, more importantly, a Manchester City supporter. Anyway, I'm going to bring you a food segment now featuring a place frequented by somebody who now is very, very important to Manchester City. Anyway, behind me is Vero Moderno restaurant, an Italian restaurant frequented by none other than Erling Haaland. I trust him to stick his penalties away at Selhurst Park, but I want to see whether his taste in food is equally as good as his finishing. It's also absolutely freezing inside today, so let's get in there and see how well they cook. Okay, so this is mainly a pasta and pizza restaurant. They have a few other things and we're having some anti-pasto as well. From the wines that are served by the glass, I've gone for a large glass of the Primitivo. Yeah, that's not bad at all and at a good temperature. Didn't like the look of one of the wines by the house, the Nero Dabla, but the other two house red wines, they look pretty decent to me. first dishes have arrived and I've not gone for anything to way out this time. All the dishes we're going to have today you could probably get at your local Italian so you can compare and contrast. We have grilled mortadella with a blue cheese sauce, gorgonzola to be precise, and we have beef carpaccio served with rocket and mushrooms. Many of you will be familiar with mortadella served as a cold cut like a salami. Let's admit it's actually the first time for me that I'm going to taste it grilled. So let's give it a go. Right, it is served on a grilled pizza dough stick. Again, something I'm not used to. I've just had a little nibble and it provides a bit of a contrast in texture. Although I have to say without the sauce, it doesn't actually taste of that much as you'd expect. That's actually pretty good. I would never have thought of grilling mortadella, but there you go. And now we've dumped it in the blue cheese sauce. I do like my blue cheese mutton easters, as regular viewers of mine will know. It does actually go better with white wine, but the rest of what we've ordered does go better with red, so... Now for the carpaccio. The mushrooms are a slightly unusual touch and usually they bring a wedge of lemon for you to squeeze over it but possibly they've already citrused it up. Good meat, good rocket, good mushrooms but I like my lemon with carpaccio so we're going to order some and have a quick slurp whilst we wait. Yeah. 
some of you might say, oh, it's not traditional to squeeze lemon. I'm not actually sure myself, it's just the way it's usually been served to me. Any Italians watching, please let me know whether I'm right or I'm wrong. But I prefer it citrus up, helps bring the flavour of the meat fully through. Right folks, the mains have arrived and my friend Adrian told me, oh they do small portions here so we have to order a third main. Now these don't look like small portions to me and you know how much I put away folks. Right, we have not just a four cheese or quattro formaggio pizza, we have five cheeses. Mozzarella, pecorino, gorgonzola, provola and parmigiano. So I like that style of pizza a lot and I'm looking forward to it. Pacarini is it, pasta tubes with oxtail ragu and finally gnocchi potato dumplings with cheese and I think it's porcini mushrooms. And now on to the pizza. Very good, very good. Intensely cheesy, just how I like it. For those of you who aren't sure about these pizzas, they don't have tomatoes, they're called white based pizzas. Red -based. Mm. Adrian hasn't had these before and he wasn't sure how they taste. That's a dish that is often screwed up but they've done it well here. The dumplings are just about cooked to the right consistency so they're not chewy but obviously you can't have them too raw and it's in a rich cheesy and mushroom sauce. Good mix of flavours. Whilst the sauce is already cheesy we added lashings of parmesan to both this and the meaty pasta dish. Noki always a good dish to order on a cold day if you're hungry because it is quite substantial. Now for the pasta tubes and oxtail ragu. Proper al dente pasta, quite firm the way it should be with a very rich and meaty sauce that's cooked on the bone and as you know Matanistas, mutton likes his bones. Worth another slurp. And I will get on with this, folks, and get back to you to talk football. Well, Matanistas, I wasn't going to have a dessert, but then I saw something that I couldn't resist. My favourite Italian dessert. And unfortunately, it's hard to share these dishes because you can't really cut them in half. So one of us is going to have to have two of them and the other one. And what we have like is a custard cream, which is a slightly odd filling for what is a pastry shell. Chocolate, you see that often, but the most Additional filling is ricotta with pistachios, and if Adrian doesn't mind, I'm going to bag you that one. <laughs> drat and double drat, I've been overruled. I'm having the other two, and Adrian wanted the pistachio and ricotta as well, which, as I said, is the authentic filling. Okay, here we go. Now, I've had these with a lemon filling before, but not with a custard type filling. <laughs> And finally, the chocolate. So the custard cannoli was, or canolo rather, was a bit bland, I thought. It was just generally sweet, soft. The chocolate, it being dark chocolate with its associated bitter flavours, was a much more interesting canolo with a lot more flavour. Anyway, before we go, I'm going to try the coffee, because I like my coffee, and it is always a good bellwether as to how good the restaurant is, particularly if it's an Italian restaurant. And let's hope we're talking about a dark roast here. And a dark roast it certainly is. It looks gorgeous. Take a look at this. Oh yeah, that is proper stuff, that is. That's proper dark, bitter espresso. When the coffee's as good as that, by the way, folks, you don't need to order a double. Just order a single, and if you fancy some more, order another single. Well, was Erling right about his food? Well, I'd say yes and no. I thought the pasta dishes were superb, quite superb, done very nicely. I thought the pizza, the five cheese pizza, also very crispy with the correct amount of cheese on. Starters were, well, the gorgonzola sauce and the fried mortadella, pretty good. The carpaccio, a little underwhelming. I'm not sure whether they use brazola or raw meat. I'm, I've not had brazola often enough for me to be certain about that, but I wasn't sure.
I also have a little bit of a sore throat today, so my taste buds aren't at 101% matanistas as I usually like them to be for you. So I'm also not quite match fit, but I'm giving myself the go ahead to go to the match. And having told you a lie, in fact a whopper earlier, that we're now going to talk football, this time we are going to talk football. East is back at the Northern Milk Refectory. It's been a long, long time since I've last been here, and that's because we've been having so many away games of late. I'm on the Little Faith Hazy Pale Ale. Just to go back to the restaurant, that was proper Italian Italian, the pasta, properly al dente. I said to my friend Adrian beforehand, to test it, can they get the knocky right? Is the coffee good? And they pass with flying colours on both parts. I'm going to keep the game previews very short because I have to travel tomorrow and I have to edit away during my stops at various airports. But what I would say, although everybody's going for a city win, all the pundits, the bookies and everybody else, I don't think it's that clear. I think and hope I will win, but I'm not going to come back to you later and say I'm mortally shocked if things go pear-shaped. I hope we just go for our normal 4-3-3 instead of messing about with three at the back, a midfielder half the time operating the left back, but you never know with Guardiola. Anyway, he knows more than I do and I will be back when the team news comes out. Okay, so the team news is now out. It comes out a little bit earlier for Champions League games, almost an hour and a half before kickoff. City are almost unchanged from their game against Palace. De Bruyne comes in for Foden in attacking midfield with Gundogan and Rodri behind them. But we've stuck with four fullbacks: Stones and Ake on the flanks, and Akanji and Diaz in the middle. We do have some fullbacks. I am not sure I quite get this, and some have said that it's caused us to lose width when we go forward. As for Leipzig, they're actually quite a bit different from the first leg. Their star attacker in Kunku isn't even on the bench, he's injured. Their goalkeeper is still a long-term injury, Gulasi, the Hungarian keeper. And they've got different fullbacks in. I don't really know whether those would be the first choice fullbacks or whether he's deliberately different from his usual template. One thing for sure is I don't think it will be that 6-3 gold fest we had against them when we played them in the group stages. I think it's going to be a bit cager and possibly just 2-1. Come on City. Ref's looking at the VAR monitor for a penalty review. Well, I didn't see that, but I didn't see it against Chelsea either in the FA Cup. Oh, penalty given for handball. As I said, didn't see the one clearly against Chelsea in the Cup, but it's hard from this angle often. Come on, Erling, do the business again.
precise penalty, whacked into the corner with pace. Goalkeeper went the right way, but you don't stop those. 1-0 City. Just the talk you it, De Bruyne was fed through after another poor kick from an under pressure keeper, a rasping shot off the bar, and Harlem was there to follow in accurately with his head. 2 0 to City, maybe this is more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. Swung in from Grealish, met at the far post by Diaz. It hit the post, rolled across the line. Couldn't quite tell whether he'd actually scored, but it didn't matter because Erling Haaland was at the far post to thump it in. 3 0 City, game over, methinks. So, 3 0 to City at half time. I would not have expected that before the game. I have to say that the Leipzig goalkeeper is absolutely shocking with his distribution. Under pressure, he's hopeless and they give the ball away so many times. They try to play the right way, passing it out from the back and pressing. But other than hoping for a sloppy City turnover, they didn't seem to have much to offer. Really happy with what I've seen from City so far. Bits of sloppiness creeping in towards the end of the half when passing it out from the goal. Edison in particular, another one from Rodri. But other than that, everything is looking fine. Cannot see Leipzig coming back from this. We made so many other chances that I'd say a fourth goal from City is a lot more likely than anything from Leipzig. It's going now. Jack. What a move that was. Some great first time touches, great passes. Harland did his bit, passed it over to Grealish, who fed Gundogan, turned, shot, goal, 4 0 City. Another one, another one for Haaland. Corner floated in, there was a goalmouth scramble. Haaland nearly headed it home. Leipzig couldn't clear it and eventually our man stuck his boot through it and it went into the corner of the net. 5-0 City. Mara's got a hold of it, it was crossed in at pace. Not sure who got on the end of it, but I know who got on the rebound. Erling Haaland again. Wow, five in a game. What's the record? I don't know.
City's sixth goal had just come on the hour. Nothing much happened until now when Riyad Mahrez went an amazing run, cut inside, as is his wont. Passed the ball to Kevin De Bruyne, who hit a delicious cold shot into the top corner. City 7, Leipzig 0. Well, Nutanistas, how about that? I wasn't going to do a post-match pint today, but given the score was 7-0, I really have to review the match properly. Nice pale ale to round the evening off, and that was a fantastic performance by City. The pace and movement was incredible. It's something we've been missing, other than in a few early games this season. I thought our press was excellent, we didn't give them a moment on the ball, and the Leipzig goalkeeper in particular was very suspect when harried and in possession and gave away the ball so many times, and the first goal came about because of Leipzig's slackness, passing the ball over and out to the corner flag to give City a corner that they shouldn't have been even close to having. Now, I have to say, even though I was at the same end as where the incident happened, I could not see that penalty and it did actually take a lot of TV replays to actually demonstrate why that was a penalty. None of the city's players actually claimed a penalty which left everybody a little bit surprised when there was a review going on. When the ref went to the screen and until the stadium screen said there's a penalty check I thought it might have been a red card check for a tackle or something. And then again for the second goal. City harried and pressed the goalkeeper, and it was Haaland indeed who forced the goalkeeper to make a mistake. Leipzig then lost possession. Kevin De Bruyne wrestled with the Leipzig defender, took a great shot which came off the bar, and Haaland leapt like a salmon to knock it home. And from that point, Leipzig were done. They lost their heads completely. They could hardly retain possession. The ball kept coming back and back and back. And then by the time we got to half-time, Diaz had just hit the post with a ball that ran across the line. Haaland reacted the quickest. The lights and defenders, I think, were a bit asleep, if that's the right word. And 3-0 and it was over at half-time. Normally when City are 3-0 up, they pass the ball around, take the pace out of the game. But then there was a mad 15 minutes where City scored three more and the other two for Haaland, giving him five, along with a beautifully struck goal by Gundogan. And well, do you think Pep was a bit mean taking Haaland off when he could have got a double hat-trick? I remember Pellegrini, I think, took Aguero off against Newcastle when he was on five. I suppose they have to look at the bigger picture and it looks awful if they get injured, but I don't know, I like our players getting these records. At which point there was a flurry of substitutions and the game did die down. A couple of good moves from Mares, culminating in that wonder goal from De Bruyne at the end. So what can we take from all that? Well, great performance from City. I don't know whether Leipzig dislike the cold and damp, the Manchester weather tonight, but they live in a cold city themselves. But they didn't seem to be first at any of the balls or any second balls. They would be dispossessed and they were performing a very odd press. At times, they were playing a high press with everybody going forward and pressing. But then after 10 minutes, they decided to play a mid press and wait for the first line of City defenders to start moving the ball. I think they pinned all their hopes on sloppy passes and transitions because they weren't going to get a goal otherwise and City just played around them so easily, zipped the ball from side to side and forward into pockets of space, of which there were far too many, but at a speed that was just too fast for Leipzig. Whilst a win of this magnitude is always good to watch and welcome, I don't know what it means for the rest of the season because I don't think everybody's going to play like that. They're either going to play a low block or a high press, I would have imagined. Anyway, Matanistas, we are into the quarter-final draw. This is where the business end of the competition starts. We could get anybody. Nobody else is left from our group, but we could get a team from the same country, i.e. Chelsea, unless Liverpool perform a miracle tomorrow. And assuming that the Liverpool, Madrid and the Frankfurt, Napoli games go to form, I reckon there are three bad draws we could get, which would be Madrid, Napoli or Bayern, and four decent draws, which would be Benfica, Inter Milan, AC Milan or Chelsea. I look forward to that, 
as I look forward to bringing you my next video. My next football video won't be until the 1st of April when we play Liverpool at home because I can't make the Burnley game. I'll be producing some food videos in between now and then, but until then, I'm going to have to love you and leave you again. But remember, keep watching, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Please tell your friends about me, but most of all, don't forget, you can't be the bit of mutton.